Welcome to Hacienda Villa. but all khakis are pants thing with <laughs> sort of polyamory and sex positivity. So unpack that notion for us. I think we are human and we have very like, you know, opposing needs in relationship. Like one side, we want security, devotion, dependability, and we want stability and, and to count on that person to, to sickness and health. And there's times that we want adventure, we want novelty, we want new people. I can light you on fire. Um, it's part of edge play. It is part of edge play. Fire! 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 Brian, you ready? I gotta do ten push-ups first. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, best shoot ever. Also, poly people are not that slutty. I think I'm the super slutty one out of that group, but most people just like the option to date other people once in a while, so that's, there's a whole spectrum in that. And I think for me, I identify more on non-monogamy, or a healthy way to have non-monogamy, is to have the, both needs satisfied. I love when my girlfriend has other boyfriends to entertain them. I I've been traveling quite a bit. I'm so happy that my, my, my main partner have two boyfriends to keep her company. <laughs> and she's like, my oxytocin level is good. Like, that's how picky we are about it. It's her exclusivity that keeps her loyal. It's my commitment to her happiness that really mm -hmm. defines our relationship. And I think that's like something that worth celebrating, you know? And I hope more people get to <laughs> celebrate each other's desires, you know? I scandalously lift her butt crack just a bit. <laughs> so, polyamory is not a rebrand of swinging from 1975. <laughs> no, I think the, the swinger culture is identifying more having very monogamous relationship where they could have casual sex outside their marriage, where they could have friends that they could have mm -hmm. sex with, but they never go on the romantic route with another person. Mm -hmm. I think the poly side is that you could love, you know, you could have a romantic relationship and love someone. And any non-monogamy format, with, as long as it's consensual, it's healthy, and it's ethical, it's all good. Um, so it's, monog you know, uh, monogamy is great too for people who love it. And I think the world, majority of the world will still prefer that. And I'm not saying that we should change. Everyone should be poly, you know, immediately kind of thing. Well, I mean, you know, in terms of like family structure, I think one good example is like, you know, when people create a family, they go, okay, you know, we're going to have one child. And then, you know, another child accidentally happens. And, you know, it's like, oh, sorry, accidental child. There's no love for you. We only had enough love for one person. Like you have your best friends and maybe you have three, maybe you have one. But then you have other friends and you have people you know, and you, there's an understanding. Everyone, I think, understands, like, levels of friendship. One, two, three! <laughs> the way I structured my relationship since I was a child was always kind of like, I have to choose one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I was baffled to have the idea of having to choose only one, but I'm like, you know, these four, you know, girls are wonderful. I like, <laughs> want to be with them all the time, like, you know. Come on in, Brian. There's going to be a lot of carrot in the stew. Yeah. <laughs> and the interesting part of working uh, on the Casual Sex Project, we, you know, Jana has a really good talk about sociosexual orientation and restricted, meaning that wanting to sleep with, have sex with more than one person is also an orientation that we never really address socially. Mm -hmm. Um, and what I mean by orientation is that something that, you know, it greatly depends on your own biology, your testosterone, your dopamine. That's my hot tub eye view. This is the first time I've seen you with clothing in the hot tub. So, Kenneth, explain the casual sex project to us. 
The casual sex project is people around the world submitting their casual sex story and now it's actually part of a scientific research. Uh, the project was founded by Dr. Jana and I've been helping her relaunching the site and it is a fascinating topic to see people, you know, sharing their casual sex story. It's probably one of the sexiest sites without any pictures and video on the internet. And then so where we could build you know, a, a culture where people get to be fully self-expressed and be loved for who they are. So before I got my first one, I thought it Anyone can participate in casual sex projects, but polyamory may not be a lifestyle choice for the masses. Last summer, I walked through the doors of the Hacienda Villa with questions and some preconceived ideas. I found engaging, thoughtful people in control of their sexuality, and I think they make pretty damn good neighbors. I can't wait for us to have parties.